The Tenardiers, commonly known as Monsieur Tenardier and Madame Tenardier, are fictional characters. The secondary antagonists in Victor Hugo's 1862 novel Les Miserables and in many adaptations of the novel into other media, they are ordinary working-class people who blame society for their sufferings. Early in the novel they own an inn and cheat their customers. After they lose the inn in bankruptcy, they change their name to John Drett and live by begging and petty thievery. They serve alongside Javert as one of the two arch-nemeses of the story's protagonist, Jean Valjean. While Javert represents the justice system that would punish Valjean, the Nadirs represent the lawless subculture of society that would blackmail him. The novel portrays them as brutal and abusive figures, some adaptations transform them into clownish characters, though sometimes still criminals. To provide comic relief from the generally more serious tone of the story, the ten ideas in the novel, part one, Fantine when Hugo introduces the ten ideas, they have two daughters named upon Ine and Azelma, whom they spoil and pamper as children, and a son called Gavroche. They run an inn in the town of Montfermeil. The Tenardiers are both described as being very ugly. He is a skinny little runt, pale, angular, bony, rickety, who looked sick but was as fit as a fiddle. She is tall, blonde, ruddy, barrel-like, brawny, boxy, huge, and agile. Fantine, a struggling single mother, arranges for her daughter Cosette to stay with them if she pays a regular fee. The Tenardiers treat Cosette very badly, dressing her in rags, forcing her to work, and beating her often. Fantine is eventually reduced to working as a prostitute in order to earn enough money to meet the Tenardiers' demands, as M. Tenardier extorts more money from Fantine by claiming that Cosette is ill. The Tenardiers spend the money Fantine sends them on their daughters. Part 2 Cosette After Fantine's death, Jean Valjean arrives in Montfermeil on Christmas Eve. He finds Cosette all alone fetching a pail of water for the Tenardiers in a dark forest and accompanies her back to the inn. After arranging lodgings at the inn for the night, he observes how the Tenardiers abuse her and how Aponine and Azelma mimic their parents' behavior and complain when Cosette plays with their doll. Valjean leaves the inn and returns a moment later with a beautiful new doll, which he offers to Cosette. At first Cosette is unsure if the doll really is for her and is reluctant to take it, but then joyfully accepts it. M.M.E. Tenardier is furious but M. Tenardier tells her that Valjean can do as he wishes as long as he pays them. On Christmas Day, Valjean informs the Tenardiers that he wants to take Cosette away with him. M.M.E. Tenardier immediately agrees, but M. Tenardier feigns affection for Cosette and reluctance to give her up. Valjean pays them 1,500 francs, settling all of Fantine's debts, and he and Cosette leave the inn. M. Tenardier tries to swindle more money out of Valjean. He runs after them and tells Valjean that he has changed his mind and wants Cosette back. He claims that Cosette's mother gave her into their care and that he cannot release Cosette without a note from her mother. Valjean hands him a letter signed by Fantine authorizing him to take charge of Cosette. M. Tenardier orders Valjean to either give back Cosette or pay a thousand crowns, but Valjean ignores him and departs with Cosette. M. Tenardier expresses regret that he did not bring his guns, and turns back to the inn. Part 3. Marius the inn, which is forced to close down after Cosette is taken, is called the Sergeant at Waterloo, because of a peculiar adventure that M. Tenardier had following the famous battle, while looting the corpses shortly after the fighting has ceased. Tenardier accidentally saves the life of a colonel, the Baron Pontmercy. Not wanting to be revealed as a looter, Tenardier claimed to be a sergeant of Napoleon's army. The tale as told by Tenardier eventually transformed into one of him rescuing a general during the heat of battle under a hail of grape shot. As it grew more elaborate with each telling, in a bizarre coincidence, the Tenardier family ends up living next to the disgraced son of the Baron, Marius Pontmercy, at an apartment building named Gorbu House nine years after the closing of the inn. 
In the nine years following the inn's closing, the Tenardier family had assumed the name Jondrette. In addition, they had borne two more sons, whom they essentially sold to Magnan so that she could pass them off as the children supported by Marius' her grandfather M. Gillenormand for the sake of procuring child support. Magnon had accused M. Gillenormand of fathering the two children, which he denied, although he agreed to support them as long as Magnon did not bring him any more children to support. The Tenardier's eldest son, Gavroche, was left to the streets, where he became a gammon. The Jondrettes support themselves by sending letters begging for money to well-known philanthropists. Upon Ein comes in the apartment in a rush and announces that a philanthropist and his daughter are arriving any minute to visit them. In order to look poorer, John Drett puts out their fire and breaks a chair. He then orders Azulma to punch out a window pane. Although hesitant, she does so, resulting in cutting her hand. M. John Drett is pleased, for he had hoped for that result. The philanthropist and his daughter then come into their apartment. They turn out to be Valjean and Cosette. Marius, observing the John Dretts through a crack in the wall, recognizes Cosette as the girl he met in the Luxembourg garden. After their visit, John Dret arranges with Valjean to meet again, but after recognizing Valjean, he plots to rob him upon his arrival with the aid of the street gang patron Minette. Marius learns of M. John Drett's plan to rob Valjean, and goes to the police. At the police station, an inspector named Javert instructs Marius to stand lookout with two pistols, and to fire as soon as the crime is committed to signal the police to come. Marius returns to his apartment and continues to observe the John Drett's. M. John Drett sends upon Ein and Azilma outside as lookouts. When Valjean returns with rent money, Jondrette and patron Minette ambush him and he reveals his real identity. M. Tenardier, Marius, hearing this, recognizes him as the man his father had mentioned in his will as a hero who was due any service that Marius could grant him. Marius, torn between his desire to aid Valjean and his sense of duty to the man who had once saved his father, does not signal the police. Valjean denies knowing M. Tenardier and that they have never met. Valjean then tries to escape through a window, but he is restrained and tied up. M. Tenardier orders Valjean to write a letter to Cosette, telling her to return to the apartment, and they would keep her as a hostage until Valjean delivers 200,000 francs to him. After Valjean writes the letter and gives his address, Tenardier sends out MME. Tenardier to get Cosette. However, MME. Tenardier comes back alone, and announces the address Valjean has given is a false address. It was during her absence that Valjean has managed to free himself. M. Tenardier decides with patron Minette that they have no choice but to kill Valjean. Marius remembers that Aponine had come into his apartment earlier and wrote on a sheet of paper, the cognizer here, to prove her literacy. Marius grabs the paper and throws it in through the wall crack. M. Tenardier reads it and thinks Aponine threw it inside as a warning. The Tenardiers and patron Minet try to escape, but Javert arrives and arrests the Mal. Valjean escapes through the window undetected. Part 4. Saint. Dennis M.M.E. Tenardier dies in prison and upon Ina and Azelma are released. Gavroche, not involved with his family's crimes, encounters purely by chance his two younger brothers, who are unaware of their identities. He briefly takes care of them, but they soon leave him in search of their missing foster mother. It is unknown what has happened to the two after that. Upon Ein is sent by Babette to investigate Valjean's house, but since she knows that Cosette, who now lives with Valjean, is the beloved of her former neighbor Marius, sends back a biscuit to Babette. She leads Marius to Valjean's house so that he may be with his beloved. M. Tenardier and patron Minette, with the aid of Gavroche, manage to escape from jail and persist in robbing Valjean's house. 
However, Aponine wards them off by threatening to scream. The next day, Aponine tries to tear Cosette and Marius apart by sending Valjean a warning to move out, and later telling Marius that his friends invited him to fight with them at the barricade at the Rue de la Chanvrie, intending for both her and Marius to pairs in the rebellion of 1832 so that she will not have to share him with Cosette. Both Aponine and Gavroche are killed at Rue de la Chanvry, despite Marius' efforts to protect the Tenardier family. Part 5 Jean Valjean Marius himself is wounded in the battle, and Valjean attempts to save him by taking him through the sewers into safety. In the sewers, Valjean encounters Tenardier, who is hiding from Javert. Thinking Valjean to be a simple murderer, Tenardier offers Valjean his key to the sewer grating in exchange for the contents of Marius' pockets. He then searches Valjean and Marius' pockets. Believing Marius to be a corpse, he tears off part of Marius' coat in order to blackmail Valjean with it later. Tenardier finds only 30 francs, reluctantly takes the money, and lets Valjean out. Tenardier and his only living child Azilma are in the Mardi Gras parade. When he sees Marius and Cosette's wedding party pass by, he recognizes Valjean as both the man who had ruined him and the man he had met in the sewer, and orders Azilma to follow him and find out where he lives. Tenardier visits Marius dressed in a rented statesman suit and identifying himself as M. Tenard, but Marius eventually recognizes him. Tenardier attempts to blackmail Marius with what he knows about Valjean's past, but he inadvertently corrects Marius' some misunderstandings about Valjean and reveals Valjean's good deeds. He then tries to expose Valjean for a murderer, producing the piece of Marius' jacket as proof. Marius realizes that it is a piece of his own jacket, and that that must mean that Valjean saved him from the battle and carried him through the sewers to safety. Marius pulls out his bloodied coat. He tells Tenardier he knows enough of his criminal past to send you to the galleys, gives him 1,500 francs, and orders him to leave and never return. Tenardier moves with Azelma to America, where he becomes a slave trader. The Tenardiers in the musical The Tenardiers are featured in the musical based on Hugo's novel. They own an inn in the town of Montfermeil, where they have been entrusted with the care of Cosette, Fantine's daughter. However, the Tenardiers treat Cosette as a servant whilst pampering their own daughter upon Ein. They welcome all customers to their inn, but whilst they appear to look friendly and welcoming, they secretly con their customers with watered-down wine, sausages made with horse kidney or cat liver and extra fees for ridiculous things such as lice, looking in their mirrors, and keeping their windows closed. One night after sending Cosette out to draw water from the well, she returns to them in the company of Valjean. Valjean tells them of Fantine's passing and initially requests to take Cosette with him, but the Tenardiers attempt to con Valjean, deceivingly claiming they love Cosette as if she was their own daughter, have had to purchase expensive medicine to treat her for frequent illness and are worried about the treacherous people she may encounter in the outside world. In the end, Valjean offers 1,500 francs to take Cosette, and delighted with the money, the Tenardiers hand her over without question. Nine years later, they are living in the slums of Paris, having lost their inn. One day, they hatch a plan to rob Valjean, whom they have learned is now also living in Paris. They disguise themselves as beggars and beg the passing Valjean and Cosette to give them money. However, upon Ein notices the police arriving and warns them, but they are captured by Javit and his constables. Tenardier tells Javit about Valjean and the brand on his chest and that he is the one who Javit should really arrest, and Javit releases them. The Tenardiers then try to rob Valjean again. Tenardier and his gang of robbers reach the gates of Valjean's house on Rue Plumet. When upon nine intercepts them and tries to force them to leave in order to protect Marius, Tenardier refuses to listen and orders upon nine to leave. Upon nine is forced to scream in order to get them to leave. Tenardier threatens her but is forced to run, and he and his gang escape via the sewers. 
Afterwards, whilst the students plan to build the barricades, the Tenardiers plan to wait underground, in the hope that they will pick up lots of wealth and riches from the dead students after the battle is over. After the barricade falls, Tenardier is in the Parisian sewers robbing the corpses of the rebels. Here he crosses a man carrying what he believes to be an unknown corpse. When the man collapses, Tenardia steals a ring from the Marius a body, and then departs upon realizing that the collapsed man is Jean Valjean. The Tenardiers appear at the wedding of Marius and Cosette, posing as the Baron and Baroness de Tenard. Marius sees through their disguise and orders them to leave, but they refuse to do so until they have properly extorted him. They attempt to blackmail Marius with the information that Valjean is a murderer, offering the stolen ring as evidence. Their plan backfires when Marius recognizes the ring as his own, realizing that Valjean must have rescued him after the barricades fell. He hits Tenardier and throws him the rest of his money before leading Cosette away, leaving the Tenardiers to enjoy the feast and gloat over their survival, despite their children's deaths. This was altered in the film adaptation, where the Tenardiers are thrown out of the party after their extortion attempt fails. Along with Javit, they do not appear in the show's finale, presumably due to their villainous roles, as well as the fact that they are among the few characters to survive the entire play. Differences in the musical are unlike their portrayal in the novel. The Tenardiers are given the more humorous and relatively light-hearted role in the musical version of Les Miserables. Composer Claude Mitchell Schoenberg said, In the middle of a dramatic and very sad story we decided to turn the Tenardiers into a kind of comic characters, to relax the audience because it's a very heavy show, though they remain the real villains of the story. The Tenardiers provide more or less all of the laughs in the show, and are therefore some of the show's most popular characters. MME Tenardia disdains her husband in the musical, but is willing to work with him to further their collective schemes. In the book, she is worshipful of him in the beginning, and their relationship cools as the plot progresses. Although Gavroche is present in the musical, no reference is made about him being the Tenardia's son. The Tenardia's other daughter Azilma and the two youngest sons are also cut from the musical. This could imply that Aponine is presented as the Tenardia's only child. In the middle of the novel MME, Tenardia dies in prison, while at the end of the musical she is shown to be alive and well with her husband at Marius and Cosette's wedding. In the musical, at the wedding of Marius Pontmercy and Cosette, the Tenardiers, posing as the Baron and Baroness du Tenard rather than merely M and MME, Tenard, try to blackmail Marius by telling him that Cosette's father is a murderer. Tenardia reveals a ring he robbed from the corpse that Valjean was carrying. Marius recognizes the ring as his and realizes that Valjean rescued him from the barricades that night. Songs in the musical, the Tenardiers appear in the following songs. Castle on a Cloud, a song of Cosette's dreams of heaven, which is quickly interrupted by Madame Tenardia to make her fetch a bucket of water, known as Mon Prince Oshuma or Un Pope dans la Vitrine in the successive French versions. Master of the House, a song sung by both of the Tenardiers, along with his drunken customers singing how well it is to have power in the pub. Known as La Devise du Cabaret in the original French version, then as Maitre Tenardier in the 1991 version. The Tenardier Waltz of Treachery where the duo repeatedly try to swindle as much money as they can from Valjean in exchange for Cosette. Known as La Valse de la Fourbrie, then as La Transaction in the various French version. The robbery, Javit's intervention Tenardier approaches Valjean, asking for donations for the fake child seen in Look Down. Tenardier recognizes Valjean and assaults him before Javit intervenes. The attack on Rue Plumet known simply as Rue Plumet in the original French version, and later as La Casa de la Rue Plumet. Tenardia rounds up his gang as they attempt to rob Valjean's home as he blames his poverty on him. Aponine stops them from doing so and they are forced to retreat. 
One day more though small, the two appear every now and then telling how they'll simply hide in the shadows, wait things out, and pick the pockets of the corpses when they're the only ones left. Known as Domaine in the original French version and as Le Grand Jour in the 1991 version, the sewers, dog eats dog Tanadia sings to himself in the sewers as he fingers through the bodies of the students. One of the show's darkest songs, it is known as Führer's Cannibalis in the 1991 French version. Beggars at the feast The Tenardiers describe how they enjoy sneaking into parties and chatting with the upper crust of society. They gloat about their survival. Adaptations Since the original publication of Les Miserables in 1862, the characters of the Tenardiers have been presented in many adaptations of the novel in various media, including books, films, musicals, plays, and games.